Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today in this video I'm going to show, how to create open core EFI for AMD desktops, and HEDTs. So before starting, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then please go and subscribe to our channel and stay connected for the latest updates. Before getting started with this guide, make sure that your hardware is compatible with Mac OS, and you have complete system specifications of the target system, on which you'll be installing Mac OS. To find your system information, follow the guide from the i button. Also, you'll get the support list of different components on our forum. The links are added in the video description. Although this guide is cross-platform based and can be followed on any operating system, either Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, this guide is specifically focused for Windows users, as most of the users do not have access to Mac or Linux and are left with Windows only. Also, let me tell you that. This is a basic EFI guide and does not cover post-installation steps, which means you'll be only able to boot the macOS installer and install macOS without any problems. However, it's very likely possible that certain hardware or features may not work and such hardware must be fixed accordingly after installation. Now, for creating Open Core EFI, you'll need Open Core Package, Open Core Auxiliary Tools for Editing Config Plist, Texts, SSDTs, and AMD Kernel Patches. Now, download the required files as shown. All the links will be provided under the video description. When downloading Open Core Auxiliary Tools, download it in accordance with your OS. As I'm on Windows, I'll be downloading Win64 version. After downloading the required files, extract it as shown, and place it according to your ease of access. Now after extracting all the files, open OCAT folder, and then run OC Auxiliary Tools from the folder. Now in OC Auxiliary Tools app window, click here, and a new window will open. Here, 
from the Choose Open Core version select latest version from the drop down list, and then click on get the latest version of Open Core. In a while, your database will be updated. After it's updated close OC auxiliary tools, without saving the changes. After closing, in the OCAT folder, go to database, then preset, then kernel patch. Here, place AMD kernel patches. Now, open open core package folder, and copy the EFI folder from the x64 folder, and place it anywhere according to your ease of access. Now, open the EFI folder, then OC, then to the ACPI folder, and now, place the required ACPI files according to your system specification. As my target system is Zen Plus, so I'll be using the ACPI accordingly. After placing the ACPI files, it's time for the drivers. Go to the drivers folder and keep the required drivers and delete the rest. After drivers, it's time to place the required kexts. Go to the kexts folder, and then place the required kexts in the kexts folder. After placing the kexts, now it's time to place the config plist in the EFI. Place the sample config plist from the mentioned path to the OC folder of the EFI folder. After placing the sample config plist in the OC folder, rename it from sample to config. After renaming, open the config plist using OC auxiliary tools. Now here, I'll proceed with cleaning the previous entries, and then we'll change the quirks, and then we'll add the entries. To add the entries of ACPI, click on the plus button, and then select all the files from the ACPI folder of the EFI's OC folder. After adding the entries, make sure to arrange them in the proper order. After arranging the entries, you'll need to add two entries, in the patch section of ACPI tab. The entries are only required if your target system consists Gigabyte or ASRock B650 series motherboard with buggy BIOS. After making the required changes in ACPI tab, move to Booter tab, and proceed with cleaning up the entries. After cleaning up the previous entries, in the MMIO whitelist section, you'll need to add a few entries. If your target hardware consists of any AM5 or DRX40 motherboard, for adding the entries, please follow the provided link to the forum, as this step is quite lengthy. Now here in the Quirks section of the Booter tab, adjust the Quirks as required. After making the changes in Booter tab, move to the DP tab, and proceed with cleaning up the entry. And after cleaning, move to Kernel tab, and proceed with cleaning up the entries. Now after cleaning up, add the kext entries in add section of the Kernel tab, from the kext folder of EFI's OC folder. To add the entries, click on the plus button and then add the entry of the kex one by one, in proper order. Now after adding the entries, go to the patch section, and here, add the patch placed earlier in the kernel patch folder of OCAT folder. To add it, click on the equal button, and then select the patches plist, and click on add. After adding, close the kernel patch dialog. Now, you'll need to modify the core count patches, depending on the Mac OS version you'll be using. You'll need to set the core count of your CPU, under the replace section, as shown where core count represents the physical core count of your target CPU, and the core count value should be replaced in accordance with the core values provided. Mine CPU is AMD Ryzen 5 3400G, which has 4 cores, and I'll be installing macOS Ventura version 13.5. So, I have made changes accordingly. Now, after defining the core values, if your target hardware consists DRX40 motherboard, make sure to disable this kernel patch. Also if your target hardware consists of AM5 motherboards with onboard Thunderbolt or USB 4, you'll need to enable this kernel patch. After making the changes in the patch section, go to the emulate section, and here enable dummy power management setting. Now go to the quirks section, 
and here adjust the quirks as required. After making the changes in kernel tab, move to the miscellaneous tab, and proceed with cleaning up the entries. Now after cleaning up, go to the boot section. Here in boot section, uncheck the hide auxiliary option, then move to debug section, and here check the following options. Now move to security section, here, check allow set default option, then, set vault to optional from the drop down list, and then set scan policy to zero. And now, go to the NVRAM tab, here select the last entry, and then delete the first key, and after that delete the value of the fifth entry. And now, make the following changes. After making the changes in NVRAM tab, move to PI tab. Now here, you'll have to select system product name. In short, you'll have to pick SM BIOS. Pick the appropriate SM BIOS. Depending on the hardware of your target system, like mine is an AMD Ryzen 5 3400G, with integrated graphics APU. So in that case I'll be using iMac 21. After selecting the SM BIOS, click on Generate. Also, if you're using Dell or Sony as target hardware, set update SM BIOS mode to custom. Otherwise, leave it. Now, go to UEFI tab, and proceed with cleaning up the previous entries. Now, in APFS section, you'll need to add min date and version, if you'll be using an older version of Mac OS. After you're done in APFS section, move to the driver section, and add the driver entries from the EFI's OC folder. To add the drivers, click on plus button, and then select all the drivers from the drivers folder and click on open. After adding the entries, make sure to rearrange them as shown. After arranging them, uncheck the true options under the load early table. After making the changes here, move to the quirks section, and here adjust the quirks accordingly. After making the changes here, Click on this OC validate icon, and by doing this you'll know if your config is correct, or if it has an error. After validating, close OC auxiliary tools while saving the changes. After closing, if your EFI's OC folder has an old config plist, just delete it. And now again open your config, and validate it to be assured. As this tool isn't much reliable when it comes to validating. And now everything is done. Now, plug your Mac OS bootable USB, and place the created EFI folder to your USB. After placing the EFI, eject your USB, and then plug it into your target system, and boot it using the USB. Here I'm booting without configuring the BIOS, as I have already configured it earlier. Also, make sure to reset your NVRAM once, before booting to installer.
And as you can see, the installer has been successfully booted with the created EFI. And now, you can proceed with the installation. So, that was it, hope it was useful, consider like for the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any question, just comment down below, or create a thread on our forum. Make sure to check out the forum for in-depth guides. Thanks for watching, and have a great day ahead.